Just talk about that. Hey, everybody. How are you? Woo! Oh, I, th I think we can do a bit better than that. Let's get it <laughs> yeah, going come here. come on. How are you? Oh, that's Heroes great. never die. <gasps> I was just going to ask you to do that. You don't have to ask. <laughs> that so, comes with the, the package. And, and Part of the package. Well, what a wonderful package. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Awkward. So, now you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna look over here. Okay. Um, so you're a real theater kid. You grew up. Yes. Bertolt Brecht is in your family. You've got some major theater roots. You guys know who Bertolt Brecht is, right? Everybody's like, "What are we talking about?" Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've got some major theater roots. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah, my uh, pretty much my whole family is in theater in Germany and in the German-speaking countries. My dad's a playwright and an actor and. My aunt is an actress, and my cousin, and my sister, and my mom's a singer, and I talk with my hands up in the air like this, <laughs> because we're theater people. And I cry in front of the mirror. No, I'm kidding. But I did as a kid. I have that joke in one of my shows. Um, when I was a kid, I used to always run in front of the mirror and watch myself cry, and I always say, that's what you do when you grow up in a theatrical family. <laughs> you watch yourself cry in the mirror. How do you manage Everybody's to like, get what the... What are you talking about? <laughs> how do you manage to just get the, the slow tear to fall? How yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's what I look like, okay. And then it makes you cry even more because you're watching yourself cry. Right. You know, It's very dramatic, very overly dramatic. So how did the opportunity for Mercy to play Mercy come about? How did that happen? Um, I had I have an agent for voice work and I got an audition and... Um, they uh, have, for a lot of the auditions, uh, the first round that you do, you like self-tape, which means you record it at home or in your home. Some people have home studios. Um, at that point, I did not have a home studio, so I'd heard that a great way to soundproof yourself is um, to just get under a big blanket in your bed. And um, so that's what I did. And they didn't, you know, they didn't say any specifics on Mercy. They didn't say that it was for Blizzard or Overwatch. They just said it was a medical doctor in combat who's very strong but also very empathetic and has a softer side. So, yeah, there was just like a bunch of the lines. And I got under my blanket in my bed and I recorded them and sent them to my agent. And I didn't hear anything for a while, and then um, I got a call back. And in the call back, I got called into a studio in New York, and Andrea Toyas, who's the um, head of casting and also the lead director for, for Overwatch, was patched in on the phone from LA. And then she worked with me on some of the voice lines and you know, gave me some notes and said, oh, can you do it like this, or can you try to do it a little softer, can you try to do it a little stronger? And we worked, and then she was like, oh my god, that was amazing. And I was born in Germany. I grew up in New York, but still, I was like, ugh, Americans are so fake. <laughs> like, why does she have to be? I was like, please, you don't have to say that to me, you know? Don't, don't just try to be nice for the sake of it, because as actors, you're so used to not getting the job, and you're so used to not expecting good feedback that when you get it, you almost don't believe that it's real, you know? So I walked out thinking, oh my God, that lady was so fake. Um, and thinking I'm not gonna get the job. And then I took another week or so, and yeah, I, I got the gig. I honestly didn't know how big it would be at all, because that's another thing when you're an actor, you get told, oh, this is gonna be huge, you know, like in the movies, you're gonna be huge, kid. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, whatever, I don't believe it. So, um, so yeah, I went into it very green. Mm -hmm. And I, they, they projected a picture of Mercy up on uh, the screen during my first session. I just thought, wow, she's so cool. I can't believe that's the character. And Andre actually said to me, do you know that this is gonna be really big? Do you realize that? And I just thought, okay, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and then obviously I was wrong and she was right, so. Are, are you a video gamer yourself? Are there any games that you consider yourself an expert in? Mm, I mean, when I was a kid, I played a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog, and now I'm dating myself. You guys are like, ew, you're so old. <laughs> oh, there's some claps, there's some claps. <laughs> um, I also had a Game Boy. Yes, I did. 
I traded a David Hasselhoff cassette tape for um, one of these Game Boy games that has like, it was like really long and it stuck out of the Game Boy and it had like 125 games on it. All the millennials are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that's like a visit to um, a museum right now for them. <laughs> They're like, back in the 90s, we had Game Boys. So, and David Hasselhoff. And David, uh, well, you guys, I'm German. I did grow up in New York. I was eight when we moved to Germany, but it was already too late. I, yeah, I, I love David Hasselhoff when I was six. So, And I always say I think that's the most German thing about me. <laughs> that certifies that I'm German. Yeah. Um, my mom's a singer, so she, like, because he's famous in Germany for his singing. I don't know if you guys know that. Um, and it's really bad. <laughs> really bad. Sorry, David, I love you, but it's bad. <laughs> and so I like put on the music, and since my mom's a musician, and my family's like super intellectual and stuff, she'd always be like, ah, oh, turn it off, I hate it. And I'd be like, no, David is the best. And um, I wanted to hang up a poster of him in my room. Back then, my parents slept in my room at night. Like, they rolled out a futon and slept in my room. And she was like, I'm not sleeping under that pervert's face. <laughs> and yes, she kind of sounds like Mercy. Um, so she said, in two years, you're not going to like him anymore anyway. And that was the moment that I decided I would love David Hasselhoff forever. <laughs> Just to spite my mother. <laughs> so yeah, and I still do, still love him. It's awesome. I, I still watch the reruns of yeah. Knight Rider. So. That's why I always say, if I would be a different character on Overwatch, I'd be Reinhardt. Yeah. Because <laughs> he loves David Hasselhoff. So, so for the Hammer down! <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so for the Overwatch players, are there any tricks or tips that uh, you can share? Oh my god, I wish. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I am so bad at it. I'm sorry, you guys. I really am. I cannot get it together. I play, I've played with uh, Charlotte Chung, Diva, and her husband, and they're always like, walk straight, just walk straight. Why can't you, and I'm like, I, I can't, just, I can't even walk straight, so. But I did get play the game last, the last time I played, even though I was so bad, I don't know how that happened. You're probably better, better than me, for sure, I mean. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't have any tips and tricks, but I would love to hear your tips and tricks. So um, when we meet, please give me your tips and tricks because I need to get better. I need to get my act together. So uh, switching gears, um, can we talk about Red Dwarf a little bit? Yeah, sure. Red Dwarf sure. 11. Um, and, and, and when we talked earlier, I butchered the name of your character. So if I can get you to say that. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, I just because uh, I'm guessing that a lot of you don't know what Red Dwarf is. Do you? Do you guys know? Oh, yeah. come oh, on, cool. yeah, let's give it up for Red Dwarf. Oh, cool. all right, yeah. Um, so for those of you that don't know, it's like a big British, uh, very culty um, sci-fi spoof mm -hmm. comedy. And it's been on for like 30 years. They, they went off air for about, I think, what was it, eight years or something six like years, that. something like that. And then they brought it back, and I was in the first season that they brought back, uh, season 11. And my character was called Harmony de Gutier. I never say that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it was, it was a, it's a time travel episode, so um, I play, basically it's like science is illegal, and um, so there's like science speakeasies, so they have to act like they're like having fun and drinking, but what they're really doing is science, right? <laughs> so it's like a reverse, it's really cute. So <clears throat> I kind of play like a science prostitute. <laughs> Look at your face. I was gonna say, no, it was awesome. Mall. Yeah, that's better. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but let me see if I can get the line together. There was crazy lines. The craziest line was, um, so she's like, hey, guys, um, do you want to grab a drink first or you want to go somewhere quiet and discuss relativity? And they're like, what? <laughs> and then she says, uh, or maybe you're, in the mood, you're more in the mood for some Copenhagen interpretation. You know what I'm talking about, where subatomic events are only perceptible as indeterministic, physically discontinuous transitions between discrete stationary states. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh That's my God, it took best. me like a month to learn that line and I'll never forget it and I'm so sorry for you because I don't know how you um, sign that. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but yeah, that was, and it's a great, it's one of my favorite parts besides Mercy that I've ever played. Mm -hmm. She's like a 1920s, very New York. Oh, and your team. accent is perfect. Like you just Thank you. So well. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, I actually had food poisoning that day. Oh, wow. And that's filmed in front of a live studio audience. Um, and the four main guys uh, in the show are huge stars in the UK. And they've been doing the show, the same guys, for like 30 years. So imagine if like, Friends, Seinfeld, and I don't know, what else is like culty? And Star Wars combined, you know? And so I was like puking all day. And so when you watch that, uh, when you watch Red Dwarf, what I'm actually, what's going on inside my head is don't projectile vomit on these stars. <laughs> Just like, don't do it. So I think that actually helped take the nerves away because I was so focused on not vomiting on people. So yeah, that's my advice for anybody doing something stressful. <laughs> Try not to Try not vomit. to vomit, that's yeah. good. <laughs> um, so Don't what's, vomit. It, what's it like working with that cast? Because like you said, they are really famous in the UK, like Craig Charles and Danny mm. John Jules and all those guys. So They were super gracious and very fun to work with. Uh, so far in my career, anything I've done that has involved working with stars I've always experienced that people that at the, are at the top of their game are very gracious people, um, like 99.9% .9 of the time. I've never had a bad experience with someone that's been really famous uh, because usually, you know, they were not famous at some point and they had to work really hard to get to where they are now. And um, yeah, especially in comedy, you know, I think people are are really uh, gracious and they were they gave me a lot of great tips and and um, and were really awesome and I think they were really impressed that I could remember those lines because <laughs> well, they can't even remember their lines <laughs> but they're old now so <laughs> <laughs> that's a great experience but speaking of comedy and this is a really good segue you have your own stand-up comedy show and if there was any person in history that Mel Brooks said needed to be made fun of, it was Adolf Hitler, and that's the basis of yours, isn't it? Hey guys, Hitler time. <laughs> and now to lift the mood. Yes, um, my dad always says, um, the Germans were the only ones who ever took Hitler seriously in the first place. So um, I, I have a show called, uh, that's called Hi Hitler because I'm a German Jew and I grew up in a very, um, yeah, very intellectual household. So there was a lot of arguments always. And, you know, in Europe for post-war kids, my parents are post-war kids, obviously, um, there was always discussions of the war and what happened and, you know, who was on which side and all of that. And so I grew up hearing a lot of arguments and hearing the name Hitler like fly around um, across the table. And so I, as a little kid, like became fascinated by this guy that everybody was always talking about. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was like a greeting. I thought it was hi. Like, hi, Hitler, not Heil. Like, hi, oh my God, Hitler, hi, how are you? <laughs> and my parents thought that was hilarious, so they never corrected me. <laughs> they were like, that's fine. When I was four, uh, my mom tells me the story. She says, she asked me what I wanted to dress up as for Halloween in my kindergarten, and I said, Hitler. <laughs> And she was like, um, I don't think that's a good idea. Maybe something else? I mean, anything else besides a vicious dictator, maybe? <laughs> and then apparently, apparently this is true, apparently I looked at her and I said, fine, I'll be a spoon then. <laughs> so Hitler and a spoon were the same thing for me <laughs> when I was four, which now, looking back, is very Nietzsche. <laughs> very Nietzsche of me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, um, but the show is, that's kind of a joke and, you know, it's like a catchy title and everything, but the show is really about, um, you know, growing up in this, like, cross-cultural way, moving to New York when I was eight and always um, kind of feeling like I didn't belong. Like, in the States, I was the German girl, and then if I go back to Germany, I was the American girl, and um, I sort of never felt like I fit in and always wanted to fit in, and I came from this crazy family, so I always longed to like hang out with kids that had really normal families. Like I just 
loved like housewives that you know like made lunch at the same time every day and where there wasn't objects flying around the house and people <laughs> screaming at each other and then laughing the next minute and like crazy people that I grew up with you know so that's what the show really is about it's about immigration you know because I'm an immigrant obviously I was eight when we moved here I didn't speak English when we moved here and I don't know if there's any immigrants in the room, but if so, you probably have a similar experience of having to translate for your parents, and you know, um, yeah. So that's what the show is really about, um, the heart of it. And the high Hitler is a joke, obviously, yeah. And, and speaking, Funny stuff, Hitler. <laughs> and, and speaking of languages, you speak five languages, isn't that right? Yeah, I mean, I'm native in German and English, obviously, and then I speak Greek pretty well, um, and French pretty well, although I won't say that in Canada because you guys will <laughs> test me. <laughs> uh, petit peu, oui, oui, c'est pas possible. Uh, that's my favorite thing to say in French. Um, and yeah, like a little bit of Italian and Spanish. Wow. Yeah. That's more than five. But Greek <laughs> is, I'm most proud of Greek because yeah. it's really cool to learn an alphabet. Do you, are you Greek? Hey, <laughs> From where are you guys in Greece? Um, we're from Sparta. Oh, wow. Nice. Um, don't mess with them. Yeah, don't mess with them. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> I love it. It's really cool to learn a new alphabet because you look at it and you go, okay, I, I don't know what that means. Right. I can never learn that. I can never crack it. And then... Once you do crack it, you kind of like really feel your brain expand. It's like, it's just sucking it up. And it, it's, it's just a cool experience. It's like, um, I learned how to juggle in acting school. And that's the same t sort of thing where you're like, I can never do this. And then once you crack it, it's just a really cool experience. So I recommend trying something that you think you would never be able to do. Because it makes you realize that. Anything's possible. Okay, now I work for Nike or something like that. <laughs> Just do it. Are there any uh, role models or performers that uh, who have influenced your work? Um, real ones or uh, characters from a story? Um, yeah, there's so many. So uh, Monty Python. Oh, I love classic. Monty Python. Um, also, growing up in Germany, we we weren't allowed to watch a lot of TV. And then when we moved to the States, my dad was like, watch TV all the time, as much as you can, to learn the language. And we were like, yes, this is the best country ever. <laughs> TV forever. But somehow we'd always watch Faulty Towers. Do you guys know that show? Yeah. It's so good, right? And, um, and so that's, I learned a lot of English through Faulty Towers. Like the word prawn cocktail. I learned that from the Germans episode. <laughs> a prawn cocktail. My sister and I thought that was the funniest word we'd ever heard in our <laughs> life. We're like, oh my God, prawn cocktail, so funny. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so Monty Python, and then uh, there's a lot of women. Uh, Lucille Ball, Whoopi Goldberg, um, Lily Tomlin. That's a lot of you know women that did very groundbreaking work as comics and character comics. So I look up to them. They're great role models. Um, David Hasselhoff, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, um, and Steve Martin, a lot of yeah, comics awesome. for me. Um, and then uh, I really love W.H. Auden, the poet. He's been, I don't know if a role model, but just kind of like a, 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 um, a companion of my life. I always go back and read his poems. Inspirational. Yes, yeah. very inspirational. If there was one show or one role that would be your name drop at a party, hmm. what would it be? Well, right now, it's definitely Mercy. I always Obviously. love to like test people, be like, oh, cool, yeah. Are you into video games? And they're like, yeah. It's like, well, what do you like to play? Oh, I play Overwatch. I'm like, oh, cool, yeah. <laughs> Who do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was I, I was in LA for the last two months and um, I went and got a coffee. I was wearing my Overwatch hat to be honest, but it's because I didn't have any other hats with me in LA. Not because I was trying to show off, not <laughs> trying to get free coffee. <laughs> so um, I walk in and the guy's like, "Oh, cool hat." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, cool." And my head, I'm like, "Should I say something or not? <laughs> Should I pay for this coffee or not?" <laughs> um, and so I go, "Oh yeah." Who do you mean? And he goes, oh, I really like Reinhardt and um, 
Hey, you didn't say mercy. And so I'm like, I'm not paying for this coffee. <laughs> this guy's a dick. No, I'm kidding. Um, and so I go, oh, cool. And he goes, who do you mean? And I go, oh, well, I am. Um, <laughs> it's funny because uh, I actually voice one of the characters. I'm like, oh, my God, you sound so obnoxious right now. But I don't know. It just came out like that. He's like, oh, my God, what? And he freaked out. And I was like, oh, of course he's going to freak out. But yeah, it's really fun to see the reactions. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so that's my name drop at the moment. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, well, at this point, I think uh, I'd like to turn the time over to the audience. Yay, Q&A. And uh, get your fans to ask some questions. Guys, remember to ask your questions very succinctly so we can have as many people ask questions as possible. And I'm going to cool. have to put my glasses on so I can see you. And, and I'm just going to go with the movement over there on the left-hand side. Because that's <laughs> Hi. We know each other. We go way back. We met in New York in October. Yeah, it was October. Yeah, it was October. And... You are just as awesome as you are now. So, please say hi to Martin. <laughs> or Dad. You can call him Dad today. Also, if seen a missing soldier glove around, let me know. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Just a little shout out. Okay, cool. Awesome. That was it, right? I think ladies found a try checking lost and found. Awesome. Thank you. I love you guys. Just talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to go. <laughs> Fans helping fans. Um, two questions. Okay. Um, my first one is, uh, if there was any kind of uh, big uh, cultural icon you'd love to voice, uh, who would you be? Ooh, cultural icon. Oh, my God. That's such a hard question. Um, Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc? Yeah. Cool. Sorry, you guys didn't like that answer. <laughs> You're like, what? That's lame. <laughs> and uh, my second one is, uh, Oh man, you know I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> I think you could be, but I think you could also not be. <laughs> Sorry. Right here in the front. Uh, so just one question, because I was just kind of about yesterday, because I wasn't sure what, you know, when I got you the chocolates yesterday, but Ooh. otherwise, what was your favorite, what kind of chocolate do you prefer yourself? Um, so you did bring me Swiss chocolate, which was amazing, and thank you for that. I prefer dark chocolate okay, over milk the, chocolate. That's the blue the label one. Yep, I know. I already ate all of those. <laughs> Please, I'm a pro. <laughs> thank you. Of course, thank you. We have a question over there. Can you take me back to LA with you? Yes, I can. Is that okay? Is that your mom with you? Oh, okay. No? Okay. If your mom's not here, we're going. <laughs> okay, great. I think he's serious. I know. I know. <laughs> it's fine. We'll figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> Gotta go with the flow, you know? We're a team now. I don't know his name, but it's okay. And I think we had a question with the sunglasses over here. Yeah. Actually, I was just wondering, how has your day been so far? Thank you. That's oh, such a nice question. It's nice. been awesome. Um, I've been here all day. So, yeah, it's been great. I've met a lot of you. I recognize a lot of your faces from earlier today. So, yeah, it's been really lovely, and I look forward to meeting more of you. It must be great to get all this support. How does that make you feel? I mean, all these people are here for... Yo, like, this is great. Ugh, I hate that. Oh, That's my horrible. God. <laughs> no, it's amazing. Honestly, um, when people ask me what's my favorite thing about Overwatch, I always say it's meeting the fans and um, hearing people's individual stories and connecting with people. That's why I love right. live performance, because I love connecting with people. Yeah. Uh, right here. I'm curious, if you could voice any other character besides, besides Reinhardt. <laughs> Hmm, maybe Widowmaker? Ooh, Ooh. one shot, one kill. <laughs> I just love, she has like the like least, like she doesn't really need to stress, put any stress on her voice. She just, I, I picture her doing her recording sessions like with a cigarette, lying back on like a chaise long or something like that, <laughs> eating a baguette. <laughs> right over here. Uh, are you talking about Overwatch or just voice? Um, so we don't record together. We, we always record separately. Um, so we always work with Michael Chu. And
and either Andrea Toyas or JB Blanc on the recordings. And then there's an engineer in the room as well, a sound engineer. Uh, so I love working with all of them, and that's because they know the characters inside out. They know exactly what they need for a certain, you know, uh, situation or voice line that they're going for. And they're just awesome people. We've become like a real family. So yeah, all of, all of the above, all the ones I mentioned. Right over here. Yeah. This one's a bit of a silly slash fun question. Cool. I love it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's write Michael Chu right now. Let's get on Twitter. Let's tweet him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. Uh, right over here. What can I tell you about Journey into the Abyss? Oh, oh, oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, Journey into the Abyss is a dystopian uh, short film that my friend Jennifer Bailey wrote. And we shot, and um, it hasn't been released. So I can't tell you much, because as actors, until you kind of see the final product, you don't really know what's going to be happening, because so much can change in the editing. Um, but it's a really fun kind of Terry Gilliam-esque uh, piece. I know he's like uncool today. Um, he he said some horrible things about the Me Too, Too movement or something like that. But um, it's sort of a very like absurd uh, dystopian piece. Yeah, it's a short film though. It's about 20 minutes, I think. Yeah. I think oh my gonna... god, totally stumped me on that one. I was like, Journey. I was like, Oh my god, am I in that? I don't even remember. <laughs> I think we got a question right at the back of the room there. Hey, Mercy, first of all, you look amazing. Um, my favorite line is still, heroes never die. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I also really like, how barbaric. <laughs> uh, right here in the front. Which of uh, Mercy's skins is your favorite Mercy skin, and then which skin in the entire game is your favorite skin? Okay, so I really love the witch skin. I think it's really awesome. Um, I really loved the Chinese New Year skin as well. The new one? Yeah, the new one and the old one. Um, and then right now, my favorite skin in the whole game is the um, Symmetra Dragon skin. It's so cool. And then the um, uh, White Tiger, is it Genji White Tiger, right? That just came out, that's really cool too. I'm kind of jealous of that. I want to take it away from him. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there was one over here. Um, which character's abilities do you like the best? Hmm. Ah, oh, good question. I mean, I think I have to say Widowmaker again. I'm kind of obsessed with Widowmaker. <laughs> I just want to be French. <laughs> no, I really like her. I, uh, what about you? What are your favorites? Hmm. Yeah, okay, great answer, good answer. <laughs> Wouldn't have said mercy, I would have said get out. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, Sombra's good too. No, I think I'll have to go with Widowmaker, yeah. Uh, right in the back there. After I did Mercy? Yes, I've been um, recognized for a Red Dwarf before. Um, and then I've done a lot of film and TV work in Germany, so I get recognized there for stuff I've done over there. Are you and Genji real friends? What? Are we real friends? Did you say friends? <laughs> uh, right here in the second row. I don't get the pick. If you don't uh, record your lines with the other actors, how did you get to know them? Uh, well, we do events together, and then we do these kinds of things together. Usually, uh, there's more than one of us, or not usually, but a lot of the times we'll be in a group, you know, or two, three, four of us. Um, and then there's BlizzCon every year, and they, they throw a party for us where we get to hang out. But yeah, that's how we met. And then 
Uh, Carolina reached out to me. I didn't know that she was in New York. Uh, so we met up in New York and just had coffee. That's the first time we met. And you guys then saw the video, obviously, where we pretended to just have ran into each other. Sorry, it was fake. We had coffee before. <laughs> But, um, and then the same with Jen Cohn, who voices Farah. When we found her, we were like, we found her. So we met up with her in New York. Uh, yeah, and now that <clears throat> we've become so close, whenever there's somebody new, we make it a point to try to meet and, um, and introduce them into the circle. <laughs> yeah, but it's very special. I was just saying to someone earlier that it doesn't happen that often that you, you guys know when you work in a team with people, you know, it's not always that you get along with everybody or click or become a family. So it is something very unique that we all really just love each other and we've really become a family. So it's, it's really cool. Really lovely. No, no, you pick. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Uh, just He's got a camera. Sorry. If they ever do a, uh, a David Hushoff story in Germany, I'd love for you to be part of it somehow. I know. Me too. You and me both. I still haven't met him, and I'm a little bit scared. Like, I'm scared that he's going to be oh. eating a cheeseburger on a hotel floor. <laughs> no. Um, no, but, uh, but yeah, I have a friend who um, we discovered that we were at the same David Hasselhoff concert when we were six in Hamburg, Germany, before we knew each other. So we've always wanted to do a road movie uh, called Looking for David, where we like get in a car and we try to, we're like, we pretend to be Germany's like biggest David Hasselhoff super fans or whatever, and we try to find him and track him down. Yeah, well, maybe one day. Cool that would be a really cool film. Thanks, yeah. Want to pay for it? No, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, it'd be fun. Right over here. Uh, well, I am on a couple of games that are coming out that I can't talk about, but those. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wow, so many questions. Uh, right here. I think that's Captain Marvel. Is that you? Yeah. yeah. I really um, have been wanting a steampunk mercy which I think is so cool, but I mentioned it to Michael Chu and he's like, cool, I hate steampunk. <laughs> it's like, all right, that went well. Anyway, yeah. Brigida? Amazing, awesome, so cool. I can't wait to meet her. I think I will be meeting her in April in the UK. Uh, very exciting, yeah, I love it. Very, very exciting. W what do you guys think of her? Are you excited about her? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Super exciting. I think right over there to the left. Uh, do you ever find it weird or uncomfortable hearing your own voice in the final product? Uh, no, I, I always think it's funny, and I think that for most of us on the game, we have moments where we're like, oh, I said it like that? You know, or like, oh, that's me? That's so funny. Um, so, no, it, it, it's, it's more like you're kind of detached. You're like, oh, yeah, that's... And then sometimes I go, oh, she says it like this. I'm like, no, it's you. It's her. It's me. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, yeah, um, no, it's fun. Fun to hear it. How about right over here? How do you feel about the never-ending nurse that Jeff keeps putting on <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm going to ask the question that everybody's been wanting to ask. Um, I think, ooh, I think that it was necessary uh, because it just wasn't balanced. Uh, it just wasn't really fair to the other supports. <laughs> and kind of, yeah, it just wasn't balanced. So they kind of had to rip the Band-Aid off and do it all in a short um, time span. And they will, you know, they'll build her back up. Um, so stay tuned for that, you guys. <laughs> How about right here? How do you deal with uh, recording all of the various dying noises? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. It's like my favorite, one of my favorite things to do. Because uh, when do you get to, like, die 20 different ways in life? Never. <laughs> So it's super fun, and there's like, um, they always have a great director for the exertions or efforts, that's what they're called in the industry lingo. And it's really great because at first they're like, okay, it's so specific, they're like, okay, now 
you're dying by being crushed by something heavy, but it's a short, it's, you're dying quickly. And then there were, after this, we're gonna do ones where you die like longer. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what are you talking about? Um, and then you're literally, they're like, give us 10, 10 that we can use, 10 different ones that we can use. And you're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And so they work with you on it and it, it becomes really fun because you have to get really creative, you know, like how do you, oh, 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 you know? Like, <laughs> and then they're like, no, I'll try that again. You're like, all right. And so yeah, it's really cool and you just find different ways to use your voice. I love it. It's my, one of my favorite things to do are the efforts and exertions. Although depending on your character's voice, they can get really tiring. So if you're doing like a very gravelly character like this and then you have to die, you have to keep it in that like kind of, um, you know, ballpark and then it can get really tiring on your voice. But I'm lucky that Mercy's, you know, she's kind of, her voice is always a little bit lighter. So um, I don't have to go as strong and mess up my voice. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> yes to dying noises. <laughs> I think we have a question over here. Hi. Hi. Uh, this, this question just kind of came up because I remember when I, when, when, when I played Mercy or my girlfriend played Mercy, but for that line when you say how far very, do you ever feel like maybe like Mercy's old or she feels like a higher class? Because Excuse she, you? It reminds me, uh, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and oh, there's a character, Obi-Wan, who, who always says so uncivilized. Oh my god, do you think I'm that oblivious that I don't know who that is? <laughs> He's like, there's this thing called Star Wars, okay? It's a thing. <laughs> um, okay. And then there's an X-Men character called Magneto, and mm -hmm. he always says, you know, men, men and their guns, but he always acts like they're high, like he's higher class. So me hearing Mercy say how far bear kind of reminds me of those two characters in terms of high class. I was wondering what you thought of that. Yeah, I think that, that she can get a little snarky. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of snark, snarkism. Is that a word? No. That's a good word. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to make that a word now. Yeah. Um, so if that, is that kind of what you mean? Like if she has kind of like a, um, like a snarkiness to it? Yeah, yeah. Kind yeah, of. I do. I like that side to her a lot. We play with that a lot. Um, uh, Michael and um, JB or Andrea and I. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. She old. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think there's a plaid, the gentleman with the plaid sleeve back there. It's been waiting for a while. What? What was the last part of the question? Oh, okay. Uh, I think that would be Doomfist, just because not a lot of people play him, and he's, I think, super difficult, right? Yeah, so that'd be cool. He's also like an amazing guy, the voice actor, and I think he's just underused. So I'd like to, I'd like to give Doomfist a chance. And then I think you said which um, origin story would I like to have? Oh my God, it's so hard to say. Um, I think any because right now um, we haven't seen that much. Not enough, I think, of her backstory. So there was like, a, for a while, there was a Reaper, a thing with Reaper. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? The thing with Reaper and Mercy. <laughs> but I think Michael squashed that, so I was a little bit, um, I was a little bit sad about that. But yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just along for the ride like you guys. I just wait till stuff comes out and I go, oh, that's what it is, okay. Because they don't tell us anything in advance, so. At this point, anything and everything. Uh, I think there's a young guy down there. <laughs> Thank you for asking that so clearly. Um, I like it a lot. I haven't seen that much because I've been here, but people are so friendly. The stereotype is real. You guys are so <laughs> nice. I also think that's like the best stereotype to, type to have yeah. about a country Ooh. that like they're just nice. <laughs> And it's true, everybody's been super kind, friendly, um, lots of apologies, unnecessary apologies. <laughs>
but yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that was so predictable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I love it. I've never been here, believe it or not. I grew up in New York. I have no excuse for never having been here, but I've never been here. So I'm looking forward to exploring a little bit. I'll have some time after the show's over on Monday to explore. So if you guys have any places you think I need to go, let me know when we meet and, oh, and I'll go check those out. Uh, red, red sweater? <laughs> Uh, New York, Excelsior, yeah, I have to. I just have to represent. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> right here? Out of everybody on a part of the Overwatch team, who is the biggest jokester out of everybody here? Uh, you mean in real life? Yeah, in real life. Okay. Yeah, mm, I think it's pretty much between me and Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> the two of us are, are big jokesters, yeah. And Carolina is, is, a, is a jokester too, yeah. And Charlotte, no, now I'm just going to name everybody. <laughs> right here. Okay, um, when the Overwatch art book came out, um, what, and people saw the concept Mercy, what was your opinion on her original design as, uh, as a man? Um, yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm glad she didn't say a man, because <laughs> then I wouldn't be here. So, um, yeah. No, I find it fascinating when, when we, um, we were at BlizzCon uh, in November. You know, we toured all around and they showed us all the um, upcoming designs that haven't been released yet and all kind of the previous stuff. So it's really fascinating. But I kind of then am just a fan like you guys. You know, I'm just totally excited to see all the building blocks. Because as I write my own shows, as we mentioned earlier, so as a writer that starts with a blank page, um, it's always really exciting to see the process through which something is created, you know? And I think that with characters, there's a big aspect of um, they kind of take over at some point and they just kind of tell you what they need to be. That sounds a little bit like insane, but it's not, I promise, I promise I'm not insane. Um, but it's just, yeah, when you create something, suddenly the the creation takes on its own life and kind of you go, oh no, this isn't right anymore. You know, the um, character is taking me in a different direction. So I, I find it really exciting to see the building blocks. And I think it's very cool that they share that yeah. with the world and don't keep it from people and say, oh no, nobody's about, allowed to know. I think it's really cool. We've got time for a couple more questions. Uh, right here. Yep. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for visiting us here in Canada. Thank you for having me. Oh, there's so many. Um, I would love to be in Star Wars. I was just going to say, how about that Star Wars yeah. thing? Yeah, how about that Star Wars thing? <laughs> Only like five of you think that's a good idea? <laughs> I know, come I on. Know. <laughs> Um, this is my casting tape. I have somebody <laughs> filming this. We're going to send it in. <laughs> um, yeah, Star Wars and then TV shows. Oh, my God, there's so many good ones. Uh, I love Curb. I'd love to be on, on some Curb. I'd love to be on uh, Family Guy. I'd love to be on South Park. I'd love to be on The Simpsons. <laughs> I'd love to do voices for those um, for those shows. I would love to be on something like very uh, dark and fantastical and weird, Ooh, Black um, like Black Mirror, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even like uh, more um, fantastical. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to have played the fish guy in The Shape of Water. Oh <laughs> yes, Just kidding. Great that bodysuit is really awesome. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Everything, I love so many shows and now I can't think of any. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. Sorry. And I think our last question right here. You clearly weren't here at the beginning of the panel. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I did not think it, was, it would be as huge as it has become. 
Uh, and the first moment I realized it was really huge was when I was in a cafe in New York and I was having coffee with somebody and they got up to go to the bathroom and the waiter came over and he was like, hi, I'm so sorry, this is very unprofessional, but, and in my head I went like immediately into full New York mode and I was like, oh, this guy's gonna tell me I can't be sitting here because I'm not eating? You know what, F this guy. I'm gonna tell him I waited tables for like seven years and he can't kick me out and I'm like going on this rant in my head like about what I'm gonna say to this guy because he's like, Try, in my head he's trying to kick me out for not eating and then I start listening to what he's actually saying and he's like I just love your work on Overwatch I'm such a big fan and I was like oh my god I almost <laughs> cursed you out <laughs> oops um, but yeah that's the moment where I was like oh wow okay this is um, and he had seen the videos and everything that um, you know Carolina and Anjali and I and all of us had done and so that was a big moment and then in September, uh, a bunch of us went to Kuwait, Johnny Gaku uh, and Keith Silverstein and I, and um, that was like a Overwatch tournament, and I think the whole country of Kuwait plays Overwatch because <laughs> it was insane. Like, we were treated like the Beatles everywhere we went. People were like running after us, like even outside of the event. And yeah, that was intense. And they had like dancers for us. They had like choreographed numbers to introduce us and like smoke and lights. <laughs> it was like a catwalk. It was, we were all like, what is happening right now? It was crazy. So yeah, those were the moments for me. Well, Lucy, I want to thank you uh, for thank sharing you. your time with us. And I know that your fans have appreciated it. So can we please give an, an appreciative thank you to thank Lucy Paul? Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can't wait to meet the rest of you. If I haven't met you, come by. We're signing again. And heroes never die for a price. Thank you for watching the Convention Junkies coverage of the 2018 Toronto Comic Con. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see more. If you would like to help us with future projects, please visit our Patreon page.